your outfit. Would you be able to make me one, but in the color blue? I hate when family requests crochet. They're so cheap. Uh, don't worry, I'll be able to pay you. So what, yarn costs about $4, and maybe Stay if you throw me in a hat, calm. I'll give you about $10, and you can get the change. It's going to cost more than that, and it's going to take more than two skeins of yarn. How about $200? $200? Look, we're identical cousins. I was trying to help you out. Crochet isn't even worth that much. If I wanted to, I can get that online for $20. That's it. There's no doubt that crochet is super popular right now and it's earned its rightful place on a fashion mantle. You can find crochet pieces everywhere on Instagram, TikTok, and online shops from crochet bucket hats, bags, tops, and more. You can even find your favorite celebrities wearing handmade crochet items, such as Olympic swimmer Tom Daly, who's become my favorite man this summer. He crochets as a hobby and shows it off online. And I'm sure you caught other celebrities like Brianna and Bella Hadid sporting last summer's favorite crochet accessory, the bucket hat. Unfortunately, big name designers have also picked up on this trend, featuring it in their designer collections. Last year, Harry Styles' J.W. Anderson Cardigan went viral after his appearance on his Today Show. Most of us can't afford Mr. Styles' $1,500 sweater, and that's exactly how it sparked the DIY craze, and fans across the world decided to reproduce Harry Style. But so did fast fashion. And in this video, we're gonna discuss crochet manufacturers, fast fashion theft, and modern day slavery in the fast fashion industry. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. Every like turns me into a wine connoisseur. The biggest problem is theft from indie designers. Most who are black have been calling out brands for selling knockoff versions of their crochet work. After these indie designers confronted them about their blatant theft, these corporations would just block them on social media, blame it on a third party designer, or outright deny it ever happened. It's basically a slap in the face saying, what are you gonna do about it? And this is the problem, what can we do? Designers often feel frustrated with the lack of support from the media and the lack of opportunities in the industry. With their designs being stolen left and right, designers are not given the chance to grow and create new and innovative ideas. Designers like Doro Awolu voiced their frustration about the outright theft. He said, the fashion industry is a minefield for anyone who isn't white. Designers feel like they're running out of creative opportunities due to the theft of their work. Meet crochet designer Lucy Weldon of Knots and Vive. This girl was shocked to discover that Fashion Nova was selling her own version of her dress that was exactly the same, down to the number of rows in the stripes. This is what Weldon had to say about the whole situation. I'm so mad. Fashion Nova has ripped out my skin out dress detail for detail. I designed the green version in 2016 and this color in 2017. They've mass produced this for the retail price of $40. That makes the production around $13, meaning whoever crocheted this was paid less than a dollar an hour. Not only are they stealing my designs, but they're using it to exploit people and profit from it. They know that small time designers can't afford to take any type of legal action. This has happened over and over to countless of independent designers. So let's have a moment of silence for those ripped off crochet designers. I went over to the Fashion Nova website and typed in crochet to see what they had available. They had 151 crochet pieces with nothing over $54. Some of these were like full ass outfits. That led me to research who and how are they making these dirt cheap garments. First, let's learn about fair trade. Fair trade brings products from poorer regions into more developed economies. A minimum price is agreed on to make sure the producers will be able to make a living wage and have a safe working conditions. Basically, it guarantees that you get Get what you deserve as a human being, safe working conditions, and enough to live on. A huge problem surrounding fair trade organizations is that they often engage with companies that behave unethically. Fair trade cannot guarantee that organizations will be able to sell all their fair trade certified products under those agreed conditions, which include minimum pricing and premiums. To put it in layman terms, businesses are greedy and only care about the dollar, not the person. While executives are taking lavish vacations and making it rain on a Tuesday, there's families in third world countries struggling to feed their families. All for that cute top that you had to buy. This is not all fair trade companies. You'll have to do your research and there's companies that do a lot of good for those communities. We're focusing on the worst of the worst. Fast fashion like Nova and Sheen, companies like that. For these shitty companies, sweatshops is where the magic happens. A sweatshop is a factory workshop, especially in the clothing industry, where manual workers are employed at very low wages for long hours under horrible working conditions. 
Remember guys, there's no such thing as a crochet machine. Unlike knit, crochet is too complicated to replicate by machine. There's no crochet machine like the Cosmel that try to mimic machines and mass produce on a large scale. I did a video about that and I'll have it posted up here and down below in the descriptions. Please make sure you check that out because it talks about uh, sweatshops also. Let's talk about some unethical sweatshop practices. Due to the fact that many sweatshops reside in countries with inadequate labor laws and little government oversight, working conditions are dangerous and dehumanizing. These sweatshops prey on the poorest people who don't have the luxury to turn down any form of work. In manufacturing companies such as China, India, Bangladesh, the minimum wage only raises from a half to fifth of the living wage required for a family to meet its basic needs. Furthermore, the average worker in Indian sweatshops make about 58 cents an hour, and in Bangladesh, that drops to 33, linking fast fashion to the cycle of poverty. According to one worker in New Delhi, we are slaves to the contractors. They give us less wages, but we have no alternative. The fast fashion industry produces inexpensive clothing to keep up with rapidly changing trends. Many brands in the fast fashion industry use cheap labor to produce clothes, which often leads to exploitation of workers and horrible working conditions. Fast fashion companies tend to target workers in low income areas who have limited alternative for employment. They do this because people in low income areas are more likely to tolerate the poor conditions, the hard labor conditions, and not only that, but waste byproducts are contributing to water pollution and food changes disruptions, which disproportionately affect impoverished areas. Fast fashion has been a huge problem within first world countries since the 1990s. People purchase trendy clothes but don't want to spend a lot of money on it. However, harmful sweatshops used to produce them also don't want to provide a living wage. You can obviously see the link between fast fashion and poverty. In India, the Indian textile and the garment industry is the second largest manufacturer and exporter in the world after China. Almost half of India's textile and garments are exported to the United States and European Union. So these garments are basically going to all the major first world countries. Let's talk about the working conditions. Along with miserable pay, working conditions in sweatshops are often dangerous. Garment workers have to work 14 to 16 hours a day, seven days a week while facing verbal and physical abuse from their overseers. Employees often work with no ventilation while breathing in toxic substances. Not to mention that accidents and injuries are super common. In 2013, the Rana Plaza collapsed in Bangladesh, which provides a grisly example. The collapse of the Rana Plaza factory caused over 1,000 garment workers to die on the job. Garment work is monotonous, tedious, and often performed in cramped, dark, and unventilated places. These have led to many health issues amongst the workers, so let me show you some of the problems that they are facing. Yeah. It's a lot. But the impact on health from child laborers is even worse. Researchers found that child labor exists almost entirely in the embroidery industry and the embezzlement stages of apparel making. Siddharth Carr from the University of Berkeley conducted a research study and found cases of forced and bonded labor as recruiters convinced parents in rural villages to send their daughters to spinning mills with promises of decent salaries, accommodations, meals, opportunity for schooling. But none of this happened. When the girls arrived at the mill, they were forced to live in cramped hostels located on the factory grounds, and they were prohibited from leaving and not allowed to contact their families. In addition, working conditions were found to be mentally and physically abusive. The girls worked 60 or more hours each week with mandatory unpaid overtime and night shift. The report showed that workers rarely signed written contracts. Let's get some more into child exploitation. While these companies prey on the poor, they especially prey on children in poverty. A report investigating males in India found that 60% of the workers were under the age of 18 when they began working. Trapped in a vicious cycle of poverty, these children are extremely susceptible to forced sweatshop labor. These unethical labor practices demonstrate how fast fashion and poverty are in a mingle. Okay, let's get into the environmental issues. Not only do the low prices of these crochet items raise questions about their production, but it's also important to consider what happens after these clothes have been bought. Cheap fast fashion clothes aren't made to last, and the low quality means the clothes will likely start to fall apart after a few years. Even if the clothes last, it's likely that thousands of these pieces will be thrown away after the trend passes and consumers grow bored with their crochet clothes. 
That means it's just gonna join the 85% of the textile waste that ends up in the landfills. If you wanna participate in the crochet trend, it's important to know who you're giving your money to and whether you're making an investment or you'll just discard your clothes and get something new at the end of the season. If you still think you're gonna be rocking crochet in the years to come, there's some great small ethical brands that can be found on local or from your local crochet guru. Please don't enable these fast fashion industries to steal more of our crochet work. We are small indie designers and it is so hard to fight back. So make sure you stick to your guns, shop small business, and make sure you check out my other crochet tutorials and informational videos. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye guys.